there is a rising of the remnant. You are called to this rising, born for this rising. There is a rebirthing and a rebuilding in the kingdom. The remnant is like a burnt wall that is still standing, strong and courageous, committed to the commitment, walk in understanding and lives in God's purpose. The remnant is bold and fearless. They go from purging the purity to process. There is a rising of the remnant and the kingdom shall prevail. Good morning, everybody. Welcome again to Divine Insight Ministries. I'm Apostle Robert Jenkins. It is a Tuesday morning, day after Christmas. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Hope you had a great Christmas. We had a wonderful Christmas. I tell you, it was a blessing to spend time with family, laugh and eat and just have fellowship. But welcome, welcome, everybody. Good to see you, Brother Rogers. God bless you. Hope you had a great Christmas. Welcome. Go ahead and hit that share button. You know, we actually do that. Hit that share button. Please share this on your page. Also invite some people out tag and share and let them know that we are on live uh, this week talking about transitional thinking. It's really going to be a blessing for you preparing for the new year, preparing for year of 2024. And so we're getting ready. So I'm going to be doing a lot of teaching on transitional thinking as we move into this will probably be a, a series uh, that I'll do at Bible study tonight and also on New Year's Eve service as well. But go ahead and hit that share button, share this on your page, tag some people, share, let them know we are on. Uh, you know, we we still working out the Facebook pages. So uh, Divine Insight page, Apostle Robert Jenkins page, Robert Jenkins page. Also good to see you. Facebook user, Brother Jamal, God bless you. Uh, also, Sister Joanne Blackman, God bless you. God bless you. So please do that. Uh, I think people coming on a little slow this morning. Uh, people getting over their Christmas season and different things like that. But God bless you. Thank you for supporting us and all that you do, your prayers. Hope you had a great time with your family. But welcome, welcome, welcome. We will have Bible study tonight uh, at 530 Bible study. And I'll be doing a part two of this uh, teaching transitional thinking, preparing us for the year of 2024, making sure that we are in the right mindset, making sure that we are in the right place. And so we'll be doing that today at 530 live on all the channels. Uh, we'll be doing our Bible study at 530. Also tomorrow, we have our uh, five o'clock intercessory prayer for women. Please join my wife and sister Mary for that intercessory prayer. That's tomorrow at five o'clock. So every Tuesday, uh, we do Bible study at 5.30, and then Wednesday, we do uh, prayer, intercessory prayer, women intercessory prayer on Wednesdays at 5 o'clock. We'll be adding, uh, going back to covenant couples. That'll be starting the first Monday next week, the first Monday uh, in January. We'll be starting our covenant couples live, again, me and my wife, and so I'm excited about that. That's a ministry that means so much to me. I am definitely a man of God that is concerned about family and covenant relationships. And so we'll be doing covenant couples as well starting next Monday. We'll be doing that. OK, and so please take heed to those announcements. So that's Bible study today at 530 tomorrow in accessory prayer. And then we'll do covenant couples starting on Monday, starting next week. Also, uh, we haven't been able to mention, but our Patreon classes, please support us on that. I'll be doing some new Patreon teachings this week as well. We're doing a lot of teaching this week, just preparing us for 2024, excited about what God is doing, making sure that we are in the right posture and right position for this new year as we embark upon it. And so I'll be doing that as well. And so please take heed. If you're not a part of our Patreon, please join us. It's a small, small fee. It starts, I think, as the smallest class is $5 a month. It helps us financially to support the different things that we have in ministry. Good to see you, Brother Glenn. But Pastor Rogers, God bless you, man. Love you so much. Love you so much. Appreciate you. So go ahead. Hit that share button. Share this on your page. Tag and share. Make sure you're part of our platforms. Uh, hit the subscribe button, the like button, and the notification button as well. Uh, take heed to all the announcements. Monday, starting next week, was Covenant Couples. It'll start at 5 o'clock p.m. Covenant Couples on Mondays. Bible study will be on Tuesdays at 5.30. And the intercessory prayer will be on Wednesdays at 5 o'clock. So we, we're definitely picking up a schedule Doing a lot of things in the month of January. We'll be on a 21-day fast. Also, Divine Insight Ministries and the church will be on a 21-day fast starting at 8 p.m. I mean, starting, yeah, starting at 8 p.m. And we'll be fasting from 8 p.m. to 12 noon. 
So basically, you won't eat anything after 8 p.m. starting January 1st, and you won't eat until 12 noon. So you'll be missing breakfast. All right. And so uh, we'll be doing that. And then the last probably three days after the re after the fast or the last three days of the fast will be in a revival. And I'll be teaching on transitional thinking as well for 2022. Doing a lot of things in 2024, doing a lot of things uh, moving into 2024. Definitely God is preparing me. So I'll, I'll be losing a lot of weight. Make sure that my health is where it needs to be. Uh, ministry is about to take off like never before. And so we have to make sure that we are in the right spirit, right posture, right position, uh, the right diet for our design going in 2024. So I'm going to be doing a lot of things, teaching and preaching about being healthy in all three areas, spiritually, soulishly, and physically. And so we'll be doing a lot of that. So just looking forward to becoming the best version of yourself in 2024 and just knowing everything that God has called you to do, everything that you're called to do, and that you begin to do that, okay? And so we are in the latter seasons of our life. And so it's time to manifest God's glory upon the earth. So good to see you, Sister Angela. God bless you. God bless you. I see a lot of people missing this morning. I know this is Christmas weekend, uh, the whole entire week. But please uh, notify some people that you don't see on the comment section. Please let them know that we are on live. Pastor C is not with us this morning as well. He's spending time with his family with Christmas, uh, his grandson and uh also his um his daughters and just having a good time with them so we thank god for him love him so much and appreciate him and so that's the announcements for this week basically uh bible study today intercessory prayer wednesday starting covenant couples next monday starting our fast january 1st uh, we'll be doing that for 21 days from 8 p.m to 12 noon the following day also uh let me see what else that we have uh, Patreon classes, please support us. You know, I have four books, five books available. Please go to Amazon and order those books. If you don't have those books uh, at your uh, disposal uh, so far, please do that. The Journey of False Perception, 33 Confessions, uh, The Kingdom's Table, uh, on that note, and also the last one, which I am so proud of, doing things right, okay? Doing it right, okay? And uh, powerful, powerful, powerful book. So please do that. Take heed to all the announcements and then we'll do a three-day revival the last three days of our 21-day fast starting in January 2024. Stay safe, uh, stay positive, make sure that you're hearing God, make sure that you're following God and make a commitment, make a radical commitment to be all that God called you to be as you move into that new year. So let's, let's get ready for prayer and Going to some teaching, got to give you some powerful teaching today on transitional thinking. You know, I'll be teaching on this probably up until uh, January. I'll be teaching on this. So Bible study today won't be on Genesis. It'll be on transitional thinking. New Year's Eve service. We will have New Year's Eve service, which is on a Sunday. So we'll have Sunday morning service live. And then we'll have Sunday night service live starting at 930 for our New Year's Eve service, going into the year uh, the right way, doing things right. Father, we thank you for your anointing. We thank you for clarity. We thank you for knowledge. We thank you for wisdom. We thank you for mercy. We thank you for grace. We thank you for second chances and third chances and another chance, and that your grace is always there to allow us. But those of us who have failed, who have made mistakes, we thank you, Lord, for redeeming power. Thank you for grace. Thank you for forgiveness. Thank you for repentance. We thank you, Lord, for all the things that you have done and you have called us to, and that your plan has never changed. We thank you, Lord, for insight and for maturity. So we touch your people everywhere. God, allow them to feel your presence. You know where those people are. You know what they're feeling and what they're going through. But thank you, Lord, that you've given us a word to help us to transition, to mature, to grow. And so we bless you, Lord, for your anointing. We can't give you anything without you first giving it to us. And so we thank you, Lord, that you are the blesser of all things. You are the mover of all things. Without you, nothing can move. Nothing can have life. And we bless you for it. Thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing. Touch your people this morning. Allow them to feel your anointing, your love. 
for those who may be going through financially. We ask you to open a window, pour out a blessing and have room enough to receive. We thank you, Lord, for family and support systems and kingdom connection. We thank you for how you uh, just or or orchestrating families and bringing things together and the power of reconciliation is coming. We thank you, Lord, for everything you have restored that the canker worm has stolen. And we thank you, Lord, for that. We thank you that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. We thank you, Lord, for a greater anointing, a greater increase of your love for you, a greater increase of insight, a greater increase of knowing your protection, that you are a protector, you are a shield, you are a refuge. Thank you, Lord, for change, for those who are changing and maturing and growing. So we bless you, God. We give you praise for this very day that we're in. Oh, God, and we bless you for all the things you're doing. Now allow this word to minister to us. Allow us to meditate on your word day and night that we can be like a tree planted by the rivers of living water. Oh, God, and in our season, our leaf shall not wither. Prepare us, God, for your coming, that one day you're going to come to receive us unto yourself, and that we'll be ready. We, don't, we won't get ready. We'll be ready. And we thank you for that. In the meantime, allow us to touch the lives that we're supposed to touch. Thank you for the daily bread that you have given us. Thank you for a level of intimacy. And we know the call on you and to depend on you and lean on you. Lean not into our own understanding, but in all our ways, we shall acknowledge you. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that leads us and guides us into all truth. We thank you, Lord, for just your mercy and your presence. We thank you, Lord, for a greater understanding and a greater discernment of your presence, a greater level of sensitivity in this season to become get givers and not takers. Oh, God, blessers and not cursers. And we thank you for it. And all these things we pray and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good to see you, sister. Rita, God bless you. God bless you. And God, God bless all those. Continue to hit that share button. Share this on your page and tag and share. I see a lot of faces that are not here today, but we thank God for everybody that is here. Transitional thinking. I'm going to read from, and uh, Pastor C is not here to pull up the scriptures. So I'm going to read from Isaiah. It's a very common scripture. Uh, but I'm going to give you some revelation on it. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 18 and 19. Okay. I want you to hear this and I want you to get pregnant by it so that you can become the, the year of 2024. We, we, we are supposed to, if you are, if you have positioned yourself, good to see you, Sister Lisa Perry. If you have positioned yourself, if your posture is right, if your attitude is right, if you are in the state of being grateful and thankful. If you have shift and obey God, you're going to see things in 24 that were a part of the dream that God showed you, the vision that God showed you. It is a year of great manifestation. You know, I don't like sometimes sayings, but I, I've been hearing in my spirit, 2024, you're going to see so much more. In 2024, you're going to see so much more. If you're on the positive side of that, you're going to see more of what God is doing. If you're on the negative side of that, you're going to see more of negativity. But make sure you are shifting. You are obeying God. There's a great call to obey God. There's a great call to listen. There's a great call to, to meditate. There's a great call for devotion. And if you're shifting that, you're going to see so much more in your life. So I want you to know that and spend time in that word, spend time with God, spend time with family. But but you're going to see in 2024 the manifestation, everything that God has given you. And so you must go into 2024. And I've been saying this for a couple months now with great expectations. Like God has given me movies and God let me know 2024. Those movies are going to come to pass. The, the, the beginning establishment of the movies that God gave me. You can't think too small when you're connected to God. You have to think large. You have to think big. You have to enlarge your territory. You have to, you have to overcome your fears and walk in faith because God wants you to have big expectations. You should know that and, and expect that. My wife loves babies and she likes the whole uh uh, twins and triplets because she thinks big and you have to say that same thing in the natural that God has a double blessing for you, a triple blessing for you. But are you expecting it? Are you expecting it? Are you writing it down? Are you preparing your mind for this transition? Very key in 2024. And everything God told you, you'll begin to see it. Everything that you have dreamed about, you'll begin to see it. Burdens that God has put on you, because burdens are to transition you. They are to move you. They, they, they cause you to be sensitive to the next season. And so I want you to have an expectation for that and move into that and be excited about that. And walk in God's peace 
but know that it's coming and it's coming because it's already here. Okay. It's already here. It, it sometimes it's here in seed form. So plant it and have expectation. Some plant, some water, but God has the increase. And so know that and stay excited. Don't let nobody steal your joy. Okay. And so I'm going to talk about transitional thinking, uh, at least four or five different messages uh, up until January so we can transition our thinking to get ready for what God is doing. Okay. Very key. All right. So Isaiah chapter 43, verse 18 says, remember ye not the former things. One of the things that hinders us from really enjoying what God has for us is that you let the past have too much weight in your life. Okay. Remember ye not the former things, let them go. Let them go. I don't care if they were good or bad. Let them go. Don't let the devil be able to trigger you by past failures or past mistakes. Okay. Remember you not the former things. Neither consider the things of old. Don't even consider them. God wants to do something brand new. Brand new in your life. And the first move is the move of the spirit. Remember that Genesis chapter one, the spirit moved first. You must allow the spirit of God to move you to move you. And he's going to move your mind. He's going to move your thinking. He's going to move your understanding. And you must accept that. Okay. So remember you not the former things, neither to consider the things of old. Many times when you, when you are so stuck in the old good place, you won't move to the new great place. And so you have to move to the new great place. You have to accept that. You have to come out of, come out of the struggler's, struggler's cup and walk in success in your mind. See it. Okay. Very key. So remember you're not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold. Okay. Which means to stare, glance. Whenever you see the word behold in the Bible, it is transitional. It is transitional. Okay. So behold, I will do, who will do? God will. I will do a new thing. God is doing a new thing. Don't hold him to old ways. Stop naming the baby. You're pregnant with something. God will tell you what to name it. Don't try to name it. Don't try to shape it. Don't try to form it. Just learn how to deliver it. Accept the announcement over your life that you're carrying a new blueprint. And God is going to do a new thing in you. Don't, don't, don't compare this to the old thing. Don't try to polish the old thing and call it new. God is doing something you've never seen before. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall bring, it shall spring forth. It's going to spring forth out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Feel the anointing. Shall you not know it? That's a question mark there. Shall you not know it? I'm doing a new thing. I'm not going to hide it from you. Shall you not know it? I've been speaking it to you. I've been calling you to it. I've been waking you up to it. I've been putting it on your level of sensitivity. I've been giving you cravings and longings for it. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness. It doesn't matter what position you're in when you understand that it cannot control me. I never allow my conditions to speak to my position. I always allow my position to speak to my conditions in life. Okay. Good to see you, Sister Summers. God bless you. And so I would I would even make a way in the wilderness. I'm no longer afraid of wilderness. No longer afraid of the world. I understand the word that God has given me in my life. Okay. And rivers and in desert, I will make a way. God is making a way for the plans that he has given you. He has shown to you. He's making a way. You don't have to make a way. You don't have to do a new things. He's going to do it. Okay. And that's the scriptures that we're really basing these, these points off that I'm going to begin to walk you down. Isaiah 43, verse 18, 19. Remember, you're not the former things, neither consider the things of old. I would advise you advise you to read this at least 21 days in a row. Next 21 days, read this every day. Remember not the former things, neither consider the things of old, but behold, I will do a new thing. And say, Lord, I thank you for the new thing you're doing in me. I thank you for the new move that you're doing in me. I thank you for the new thinking that you're giving. Okay. Good to see you, Cindy Mo. God bless you. Looking forward to coming uh, to Youngstown. Looking forward to it. Okay. I will, And I will even make a way in the wilderness and even in the desert. OK, very key. Point number one, and I'm going to give you a lot today uh, concerning changing your mind. you got to change your mind. If you don't change how you see things, how you see things won't change. If you don't change how you see things, how you see things won't change. But if you change how you, if you change how you see things, 
and how you see things will change. And all changes start in the mind. Point number one, accepting that we must command things to move when you know where you should be. Point number one, accepting we must command. Now, many, many times we don't see the new thing come to pass because we're not operating in our place of authority. There are some things that God commands us to do. And you must begin to command certain things to move out of your life and certain things to move in your life because I know where I should be. So my finances must move. My health must move. My thinking must move. And use your legal authority. Whatever you loose in heaven shall be loose on earth. Whatever you bind in heaven should be bind on earth. And you must use your legal authority to begin to command things to move. Yesterday I was in prayer and, and I try to stay in prayer and God began to tell me, and even this morning, he said, I want you to command certain doors to be open. He said, I'm, I'm, going, to, I'm going to place you at campuses for you to speak to college professors and college students. Make that commandment. Begin to command for those doors to be open. Begin to command for doors to be open for you to come to different colleges and different auditoriums and speak. Command those doors to be open. I've been commanding the doors to be open for my books and for people to say, I need you to come and do a seminar here on, on business, on transactions, on different things, because I am a I am a global preacher. I have a global anointing. I have a very huge range in which I can speak, but I must command certain doors, certain things that you see, you are attracted to them because you're called to be attached to them. And so you must know what you are attracted to, to understand your attachment. And so God, and when you do that, you command that. When you see people and things in places, you know you're supposed to be. I make a command for that season to come in my life, okay? Especially when God gives you a burden, when you feel it. And this is that season. Trans, transitional thinking is when you're not afraid to make commandments. You're not looking, you're not waiting for things to happen. You're commanding things to happen. You have that legal authority. You know your authority and you speak those things. You call those things as not as though they were. So we must accept, accepting that we must command. Quit being afraid, quit being timid, quit being uh, so docile, quit being uh, fearful. No, make a command. This is the place that God, I know that's where I'm called to be. I make a command for that to be released, finances to be released, for my health to be released for my insight to be released, for my favor to be released, for my blessings to be released, for the houses I'm supposed to have in different cities to be released, for the invitations to be released, okay? Many times the devil is fighting like he fought Daniel's prayer for 21 days, and you must make a command for that to be released, for that understanding to be released, okay? That's very important. And so I accepting that we must command things to move on my behalf to move on my behalf, to move on my behalf, to, to move on the behalf of purpose, to move on the behalf of destiny. And you have to make that command. You command it. And because of the legal authority that you have, God is waiting for you and watch things move when you tell it to move. Some things are going to move out. Some things are going to move in. See, but you must make a command for this to move. OK, and that's what we do. We lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. OK, we open up blinded eyes. We, we give liberty to those that are bruised. We, we, we send the word and, and we know that it, the, the anointing comes to heal the brokenhearted. And we make a command. We're not scary anymore. We're bold soldiers. And you must know that a commandment is a military word to understand the legal authority that you have. And you begin to send out your your warriors, your workers. You don't work for money. Money works for you. You command it to work for you. You command your seeds to bring your harvest to you. And you must accept that. That's transitional thinking. When I'm no longer fearful, I'm no longer hoping that something just come by, but I have legal authority to know that the time has come. And so I make a demand on it. I make a demand. I make a demand on the potential of the seed. Seed be fruitful. Every idea that I have released out, I'm, I'm, I'm demanding for you to come back with a harvest. And you must know that and not be afraid to do that. Not be afraid to walk in that. To make, make a demand for it and watch what happens. 
Watch what, ha watch what happened when you demand a release because my name is on it. My name is on it. My destiny is on it. God's nature is on it. And it belongs to me and I have a right to it. Okay, so accepting that we must command things to move and you and I, and I would even advise you to write it down. What do you need to move on your behalf before 2022? What do you need to move in and what did you and what do you need to move out? I command doubt to move out, fear to move out, low self-esteem, you're moving out. You are evicted. So you have a right to do that. And that's a part of transitional thinking. You will never be able to see everything you're supposed to see if you don't know how to change your thought pattern concerning your authority. OK, so point number one, accepting that we must command things to move when you know where you're supposed to be. How long are you going to wait on this? You know where you're supposed to be. How long are you going to let somebody talk you out of this? How long are you going to settle for something that you shouldn't settle for? No, move, move, move. Holy Spirit, move on my behalf. Move on my behalf, see? And you understand that. And you start to see that. You start to speak that. Remember we talked about the God, the God saw, the God called. You see, all of this. And God said these God principles. You must declare that. One of the things that we must walk into, good to see you, Sister Monica, in the year of 2024 is learning the power of life and death is in the tongue. Stop complaining about things and begin to intercede and speak those things. Okay, very key. Point number two for transitional thinking. I'm talking about trans transitional thinking that really comes from transitional thinkers. You must know I am a transitional thinker. I think in transition, transition completely all the time. Nothing can get me stuck on planet. See? I know the difference between being planted and being stuck. See, I understand that. Point number two, not upset when you move. Transitional thinkers don't get upset when they move or things are moving. God will move you. I have been in many cities and I knew when my time was up when I had to leave Charlotte and move here to New Orleans. I knew my time was up when I had to leave Ohio. I knew my time was up when I had to leave Buffalo. I knew my time was up when I had to leave Atlanta. You cannot be ex be ex upset, uh, anxious, or nervous, or worry when this is a God move. I'm not upset. It's time to move. I love you. I, uh, it's been a blessing. This covenant relationship has been a blessing, but it's time for me to transition. Don't let nobody keep you where they met you. Don't be upset because you have to go. I have to go. Jesus said, I got to go, but I'm going to leave you the Holy Spirit, but I got to go. You're not even ready, but I got to go. And you can't be upset when it's time for you to transition, whether that's from one place to another, whether that's from one person to another, whether that's from one grade to another. You cannot be upset because that season that you were in is over. Move. I'm not going to be upset. I'm not going to have to apologize. I'm not mad. Uh, I'm just moving. I'm following God. Those who get upset with you for following God, they need more clarity. They're holding you hostage. You are not a prisoner to friendship. You're not a prisoner to covenant relationships. Some things are seasonal. Some things are lifetime. Some things are just for the moment. Some things are temporarily. You must know that. And you cannot be upset because God is shifting your thinking. OK, God is shifting your thinking. So I'm not going to be upset when it's time to move, when God has to move me, when I know that God is saying, go here, go higher, come here, come hitter. I know that and be upset. And not only I'm not going to be upset when I have to move to the next level in God, the next level of prayer, the next level of fasting, the next level of studying, the next level of consecration, my next assignment, my next challenges. I'm not going to be upset. Yes, it was good. Yes, it was wonderful. Not mad at you. I don't need God to rip it. I can transition. See, quit being a part of a rip and learn to follow God in transition. Transitional thinkers are not upset when God says go. Okay? There's blessings waiting for you. So not upset when it's time to move. And not only when it's time for me to move, but I'm not going to get upset when God is moving things. Stop praying for things to happen. Then when they move, you're getting upset. 
That was a part of God. You prayed for it. God put it on your heart. He put it on your burden. Things are moving, isn't it? You should be excited about that. Thank God when you see the move. Some things have to be able to be separated before God can connect you. See, and so you have, so God is moving. So I'm not upset. This is a move of God. This is a move of God. This is a move of God. And so I, so when things begin to move, thank God for them. Hallelujah. I see it. I, I, that's not upsetting me. That's not making me think I've messed up again. That's not making me think people are leaving me or they following God. I'm moving. Things are moving. And I will not be upset. I will not be bitter. I will not take that poison to the next place because I don't know how to transition. I'm always used to being ripped apart. So when God say go, I, 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 disobedience caused me to stay too long. We don't stay in good ground. We don't leave bad ground. We move as God tell us to move. But when it happened, you can't let your emotions get in the way because it's time to go. It's time to go. It's time to go. And for many of you, God is transitioning you. And you have to have the right mindset in order to transition. Not upset when God tells me to move and not upset when things start moving. It's a part of God's plan. That's point number two. Point number three, accepting that the wound is where I was birthed, but the world is where I expand. The wound is where I was birthed, but the world is where I expand. What do you mean by that? When a baby is born in the womb, you have nine months to be in that womb, but it got to come out. It can't stay in the birthing place. For many things that you were attached to, that was the birthing place for you. It helped you. It, it shaped you. It fed you. It loved you. It spoke to you. But you can't keep hearing from the inside. You have to come out. You have to come out of the womb and move into the world. You can't get but so big in that womb. You can't grow but so large in that womb. You're going to be bring death to yourself and death to those who are carrying you if you don't come out of the womb and expand in the world. It's time for you to be able to see the way God wants you to see it and not see everything through the eyes of others, not hear through the eyes of others, but learn how to use your own eyes and your own ear and the very thing that has shaped you. Now it's time for you to be able to expand that, have a revelation on top of the revelation that I help you. And so in, in, in traditional thinking, we okay when the womb must be left. See, accepting that the womb is where I was birthed. And I thank everything that birthed me and that helped shape me and fed me when I couldn't feed myself. I chewed up the food when I didn't, wasn't able to chew up the food. I was a baby in the womb. But I must know that the world is the place I'm supposed to. I'm not supposed to be six feet tall in a womb. I ain't supposed to be six years old in a womb. That's for the world, for me to expand. And so there's ministry in me. There's calling. There's anointing in you. And so you have to change your thinking by to say, I thank you. And don't let people make you a prisoner because they don't want to help you in the womb. They don't want to fed you. That was your responsibility. But you can't keep me tied to the umbilical cord when there's more in me. And so transitional thinking, except the womb was a great place for birthing, but the world is the place for expansion. I must expand. I must grow. I must become all that God called me. I can't stay on your tree forever. I must release the seeds that are in me. Very key. So point number three, accepting that, that the womb was where I was birthed, but the world is where I expand. Your time has come. There's a changing of the guards. There's a changing of God trusting assignments with new mind, with fresh ideas, with fresh anointing. Okay, very key. All right, so that's point number three. Point number four, accepting that the restrictions that I had in the womb was only to make me not settle. I want you to get that this morning. Accepting that the restrictions for many of you, you were under restrictions and God didn't let you move for a while. You had to be in that womb for nine months. You was under a level of restriction. God lets you feel that restriction so you wouldn't settle. He lets you feel it. It got tight on you so you can, knew that, so you can know there's more to this. This is uncomfortable. 
This is uncomfortable. So that restriction was not to hold you down. It was to make sure, do you really want this? How bad are you willing to stretch beyond the restrictions? How much do you crave for? Because restrictions was not there to make you settle. They was there to tell you, you can't give me all that I need in this place. I'm too big for it. I got to be bigger. There's more for me. And it's nothing against you, but I got to go higher. I got to go deeper. See? So I accept that the restrictions that I was under, they were for discipline. But now that I have the discipline, I, I can't settle. I can't settle. And I'm telling you, that's something God been really talking to me about in 2000, moving into 2024. And I wrote a song the other day, me and my granddaughter. I wrote a song. I, 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 no, more, no more settling. I'm not settling. I'm not settling for good when I'm great. I'm not settling okay when I'm awesome. No more settling. No more settling. That restriction that I was under was, a, was to see how much fire could burn in me against the restrictions. How much it irritated me to hold me back. How much it made me more hungry because I, I had a limited amount of food. It created a greater appetite for more. I didn't settle. See, so accepting that the restriction of the last season was not for settling. It was to see how bad do I really want what God gave me? Are you really going to go after it? Or are you going to delay another year? Are you going to walk in cycles another year? Accepting that restrictions was only to make me not settle. And some things God made it real tight so you can get mad enough to change. So you can get mad enough to move. For you can get mad enough to say there's more. For you can get mad enough to start searching. He, he, want, he made that restriction tighten you so you get angry so you would develop your spiritual muscles. Not settling for this anymore. Okay. So the point number four, accepting that restrictions was not only, it was, was only to, to make me not settle. It was only to make me not settle. That's point number four. Point number five, I must keep pecking until the birthing place breaks. This is a story I've learned years ago and God brought it back to me. Uh, when a bird is in an egg, a little bird is in the egg and that's the only world that he knows but there is something in that little chicken that makes him peck and he keeps pecking. And even though this is the only world that he knows in that egg, that's the only world that he knows, there's a world that that egg is in. And even though he's limited to what he can see because he's in the egg, there's so much more he could see if he would break out of the world that he's in. You must know that there is something in you that made you keep pecking. Something told you there was something greater than the church you was raised up in. Something told you there was greater than what your family lineage was able to achieve. Something in you told you, keep pecking, keep pecking, keep going after more, keep, keep working, keep praying, keep fasting. And you have to know that that thing that was in you was trying to tell you there's another world out there. There's greater opportunities out there. There are greater blessings out there, but you got to first keep pecking and not settle for the world that births you. I hope you hear me this morning, transcendental thinking, because greatness is around the corner, but you got to keep walking. You got to keep craving. You got to keep dreaming. You got to keep writing it down. You got to keep uh, creating pictures and images of it. You have to stay hungry for it. Keep pecking until the birthing place breaks your egg break there's a whole nother world out there there's a whole nother opportunity you're not limited to what your father was limited to you're not limited to what your mother was limited to you're not limited to your culture you're not limited to uh there's not enough jobs in this city there's so much in you so much career so much opportunity so much potential but you gotta keep pecking you are dying in that world if you settle for that's the only thing you're ever going to see. That's the only thing you're ever going to attain. That's the, that's the, that's the farthest you can go. One man's ceiling is another man's floor. Go upstairs. Quit looking up. There's another layer. See? So I must keep pecking. I must keep writing. I was talking to God this morning, and he, uh, I said, God, I got five books out. He said, I want you to get three more out this year. Probably four. 
Why? I got to keep pecking. I'm, I'm pecking. There's something. There's something out there. Somebody needs to read something. Maybe the, the right book ain't been released yet, but keep pecking. Keep writing the songs. Keep producing. Keep producing. Keep preaching. Keep teaching. Keep pushing. Until it break, until you see that the world that I was in was in another world. There's another layer. We go from faith to faith, from glory to glory. See that? So I must keep pecking until the birthing place breaks, till the limitation breaks, breaks, till the opportunity breaks. See? Till that cow breaks open. See? And I'm telling you, you got to change your way of thinking. You got to accept these things so that you can transition. The light has come. Man, I feel they know it. That's point number five. Point number six, transitional thinking will always come, will always cause some form of separation. Transitional thinking will always cause some form of separation. Be ready to be separate from some things. Some things God got to pull you out from. You got to separate yourself from negative thinking. You got to separate yourself from toxic people. You got to separate yourself from emotional things that drive you to the negative. You got you 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 you, you got to you got to you got to realize transition means transition. It means to move from one place to another. That's why you can't have no emotional ties. You can never be tied to something so to the point that you can't move. It's always going to cause some form of separation. And you have to be okay with that. You have to be separate from that. God is trying to teach you how to lean on him. You have made idols out of some things. You got too much dependency. God wants you to trust him. And so in transition is a form of separation. And it's okay. Because if we connected by the spirit, it's okay. See? But I'm willing to go. It's not where you're going. It's what you're willing to leave behind. You can never get to where you're going if there's some things you're not willing to leave behind. You have to leave behind. And I'm telling you, God has transitioned me in so many ways. I, there's some people I have to leave behind. There's some things I have to leave behind. There's some thinking I have to leave behind. Good to see you, Sister Press. God bless you, Elder Press. Sister Lampkin, God bless you. you. You know your day has come. And so transitional thinking means some things I'm going to be separate. It causes separation. And everybody's not going to understand it. You got to follow God by faith. Abraham, I want to transition you. I want to make your name great. But you got to leave your mother. You got to leave your father. You got to leave your cousins. You got to leave your country. You got to leave some things. It's transitional time. Transitional thinking. It's going to cause separation. It's going to cause separation. It's going to cause separation. You got to be okay with that, following God. And they really love you. They want you to move on. Watch people who want you to be stuck with them. Misery loves company. See? And if you don't change your way of thinking, sometimes you're too connected to things. When it comes to kingdom, you got to put everything down with Velcro. You never know when God going to say move. When they had the tabernacle of Moses, and they were transitioning from one place to another, leaving Egypt. They would only put those stakes in the ground six inches. Those were 12 inches stakes. They would only put them in the ground six inches because they knew the next morning we got to pull them up. We got to follow the cloud by day and the fire by night. But we can't put them down as if we're stuck. So many things, some things in your life, your thinking made you think permanently when it was only a season season see as an apostle i know every place i go to i go for seasons i understand that and when god say move i got to transition and it causes separation and for one one set of people they they said that you're leaving and for another set of people they glad that you came when i moved to new orleans people say god sent you here people in charlotte were saying man we gonna miss you we hate that you have to go, but they understood apostolic transitional thinking, and you will have separation. Transitional thinking will cause some form of separation, separation from old mentalities, forgetting those things that are behind you, press towards the mark of the high calling. Remember not the formal things. Remember not the formal things. Some good things that get you stuck and you're never moving to greatness. 
as great as you may like your first grade teacher, there's another teacher you haven't met in the second grade. And you have to know how to transition. And one of the things would be okay with separation. There's some friends I grew up with, I don't talk to them as much as I used to because there's a form of separation. Based upon the assignment, based upon the purpose, it that determines how much we talk. That determines how much we do things together based upon the assignment. If the assignment is over, probably the level of our community is over as well. And there's a new community that God is forming me to, and that's okay because God got to transition you. And they got to accept the new like you have to accept the new. Transitional thinking will always cause some form of separation. And many times you have disqualified yourself to be trend, to be in the next place because there's some things God know you're holding on to. That's what happened in Lot's wife. She couldn't let go. The Bible says she lingered. Stop lingering when it's time for you to transition. I'm telling you I'm going to tear this place down. I'm telling you I'm going to burn it up. Get out. Don't linger. Don't look back. A man who looks back is not worthy of the kingdom. Put his hand towards the plow. Transition. You, there's some things you're going to be separate from. There's some things you have invested in, but you have to leave them behind. Every time I, I left a studio, I left songs behind. But God will give me a new song. I'm going to be separate from that. Transitional thinking will always cause some form of separation. Okay, I like that. Graduation will require separation. Very much so. I, I got to leave the school. I'm graduating. I'm done. See, very key. That's point number six. Point number seven. Transitional thinking is the leading of the Holy Spirit. You're not doing this because you're mad. You're not doing this because they promise you all these blessings. You are following the Holy Spirit. You don't leave bad ground because you're mad. You don't stay in good ground because it's good. It's the leading of the Holy Spirit. Transition. This is the reason why God told Moses, be still and see the salvation. Why? Because Pharaoh is not chasing you. I'm transitioning you. It's the leading of the Holy Spirit. I told you, go tell Pharaoh, let my people go so that they can serve me. I didn't send you there to join up with Pharaoh. I sent you back there to bring the people out. This is the leading of the Holy Spirit. Stop questioning what God told you to do. Stop questioning. Stop looking for a sign after 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 a sign. After a sign. How many signs you need? These signs should be following you because you're moving. See, you're not an unbeliever. Signs are for the unbeliever. You're a believer. Transitional thinking is the leading of the Holy Spirit. It amazes me people a lot of times, they'll say, I'm led by the Holy Spirit. I can't tell because when, you, when the Holy Spirit moves, you don't move. That's how you get stuck in religion. When you don't move with the Holy Spirit, when you don't allow the Holy Spirit to be able to give you new instructions, new assignments, Abraham, take your son and sacrifice it. But when he got to the mountain, no, there's a ram in a bush. Sometimes you can't get to the second instructions because you didn't take heed to the first ones. I'm, I'm preaching to you today. Transitional thinking is the leading of the Holy Spirit. And if people get mad because you're following God, then let them get mad. You got to be delivered from people's opinions if you're going to be a transitional thinker. How can God trust you with new assignments? Every time God gives you an assignment, you fall in love with the assignment more than the one who gave it to you. Quit, quit enjoying the dream that you don't want to wake up. Stop enjoying the dream that you don't want to wake up and bring it into reality. All right. Transitional thinking is the leading of the Holy Spirit. Good to see you, Sister Angela. God bless you, Sister Fox. God bless you. That's point number seven. Point number eight, transitional thinking demands change from you and those around you. When you start encountering transitional thinking, you are going to change. You can't stay the caterpillar when you're called to be the butterfly. You will have to change your thinking. You're not on the ground anymore. You're not this ugly worm. You got wings. You got color to your life. You got weight to your life. You have anointing to your life. 
You want to see things at a different level. You can't want to be a transitional thinker, but you don't want to change. You are going to change. How you see things are going to change. How you approach things are going to change. Don't let people keep you where they heard you. What I used to say is where I was. What I'm saying now is where I am. That's what I said when I was there. This is what I'm saying when I'm here. Transitional thinking demands change from you and from those around you. You can't stay, you can't stay with me if I'm changing and you're not. We're going to be unequally yoked. And many times you are unequally yoked with believers were believers because you changed and they didn't and they want to hold you to an old word so that you'll never be able to walk in your new word no transitional thinking demands change i'm constantly changing i'm constantly changing how i see things there are places that i used to curse that god said i need to take you to that place you better start blessing it because the way you saw it was always going to hinder you from the blessing that it has some things you got to change the way you see it so when you go into it you won't curse it you, you're changing you're you're not a caterpillar See, and the people around you, you know what really break up marriages is when there's an unequal shift. When the husband shift and the wife didn't, when the wife shift and the husband didn't, you know what causes division in churches? When there's an un, un, unbalanced shift. When, when, when somebody's changing, but everybody else is not changing together, endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit. So you got to change if I'm changing. Because you better hold me to what you thought. You better hold me to what you want me to be, not what I've been called to be. You may hold me to what you need me to be for you to stay stuck. For you to be stuck and be happy, you need me to stay the same. When God is involving me, even when you're young and you get married at 17, let your wife know, you, I married you as you are, but you, you are going to change. So I have to change with you, or I'm going to say you change. That's why we're not making it. As if you have to stay stuck. You have to stay immature. See? I'm changing from immature to maturity. I'm changing from when I was a child, I spoke as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. I'm changing. And it demands for you to change and for those around you. Yep. If they don't change, separation comes. Because it's transitional. It's transitional. You got to change how you dress. It's wintertime. You got to put on warm clothes. You have to switch your long sleeve to your short sleeve. Switch your short sleeve to your long sleeve because the season has changed. You have to put on a... Uh, 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 my wife tell me, put a hat over your head and make sure I got a lining. Why? Because the temperature is different. It's a different atmosphere. You got to change. Okay? And those around you. And sometimes, sometimes the friction comes when they see you changing and it's starting to look like y'all don't agree. Yeah, because I'm not in, I'm not in the second grade anymore. See? I've learned a new way to get downtown. My strategies are more wiser. My decisions are more healthier. You liked me when I was sick, but I didn't get healthy. I didn't change. Change my diet. Don't eat what I used to. Ooh, we see candy all day long. Can't eat candy all day long. Lost too many teeth. See? Point number nine, transitional thinking gives you the courage to change the course. When you begin to embrace transitional thinking, you're not afraid to change the course. I'm, I'm changing classes. It's time to go. And, and, and I have the courage to do it. Have the courage to do it. When I knew God was bringing me to New Orleans to be with my wife, change courses. I had to switch jobs, change courses. Switch insurance company, change courses. Change driver's license. Change courses. That was all part of the new destination in which God had me. And you have to have the courage to do it. Quit saying, I'll, I'll go wherever you go, God. But you don't have the courage to change your course. You're you, you scared to move. 
Who has bullied you into a stuck place? Who has bullied you into a stuck place? Transitional thinking gives you the courage to change your course. See, I walk according to the course of this world, but I no longer do that. I no longer do that. I'm no longer going. I'm no longer going to New York, so I ain't going that route. I don't get. I don't get in the car with people who are going to New York because I, I got a new course. I got a new way with how God is doing things with me, and I have to have the courage to do it. The courage to step out of the boat. Man, I feel the anointing, and I'm praying for you. But I know you can do it. You have to change your thinking so that you can be able to to go into that place that God has called you to. All right, very key, very key. Point number 10, transitional thinking says I will proact and maintain from now on. This is one of the things God showed me, that the more I the more I embrace transitional thinking, good to see you, Captain Forrest, love you so much. I'm, I'm no longer reacting, I'm proacting now. I, I got to quit learning after the fall. How many times you going to have to fall for you to get the lesson? You have failed enough time. You should be wiser in your choices now. When you become transitional, you start to proact. You know how to plan before you move. You know how to prepare for the move. You understand the posture before the position. You, you proact. Don't react. Quit responding to everything or reacting to everything because if you are transitional thinking, you knew this day was going to come. Didn't God tell you you're going to have you all over the world? Didn't he tell you he was going to have you teaching? Didn't he, have, didn't he tell you you was going to raise many sons and daughters? Didn't he tell you you was going to open up businesses? So why are you still reacting? Why are you not proacting? Why you don't have the plan? What's the blueprint? What's the strategy? See? Why are you not enlarging rooms? Why are you not buying something for where you're going? Why are you not looking for something based upon where your destiny is? Why you keep getting in rooms too small, getting in classes that don't, don't understand you, being around people who don't appreciate you? Stop reacting and start proacting. Have a proper expectation. And once you understand that from transitional thinking, then you also maintain it. Yesterday, when we I came home from uh, my sister-in-law's house, she'd be on a lot of times in the morning. And she would call me sweetheart. That's my sister-in-law. That's my, my wife's sister. And uh, when we got home, uh, I cut the car off, opened the door for my wife, and then I was going to put my car in the gate. And the battery was dead. And so I put the hood up and looked at it, and it had corrosion around it. But I didn't panic. There would have been a time that would have threw my whole spirit off. But I have matured. I have transitioned in how I handle life. I have transitioned. So I said, okay, I'll, I'll get a jump. My daughter's here. I can get a jump for her. My granddaughter's here. I can get a jump for her. I'll jump the car. Thank God we have two cars. I'll switch the cars. And then I said to myself, and I'm going to change this battery. And from now on, I'm going to check the battery when winter times come because I got to quit reacting to once the car is dead. How many things got to die before you start maintaining it? How many things have to sit and wait because you didn't maintain it? So God began to tell me, and I wasn't upset. I didn't kill myself. I didn't tell myself, oh, you, you're not a man. You're not responsible. No, my I understand transitional thinking. These things happen. Once you learn from it, now maintain it. Keep that battery clean. Check those airs, the air level in, in your tires. Keep your grass cut. Because in transitional thinking, you are going to be accountable for how you maintain things. Not keep getting things. Not after things break and 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 and, and relationship is broken. Uh, no, your 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 love is broken. Your heart is broken. No, learn to maintain healthy situation. Learn to maintain healthy batteries. Learn to maintain healthy grass. Healthy life. Learn to maintain it. I, once I go on a fast and God begin to teach me a, a, a spiritual diet, I'm going to maintain that. I'm not losing weight, gaining weight, losing weight, gaining weight, losing weight, gaining weight. No, I got to learn to maintain because that's transitional thinking. Transitional thinking is more about magnets. It's more about management. It's not about attaining. Can you manage what you attain? 
And if you're not ready for that level of thinking, you have to have a garage for the car God going to give you. You have to know how to cover the grill. That's a real nice grill, but you don't cover it. There's a magnet that come along with it. So transitional thinking, and you accept that responsibility. You're not always recovering. You're doing more managing. Transitional thinking teach you how to proact and to maintain from now on. And it's okay. That's what I got to do. So when it get cold, I go check the battery. I clean off the, 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 the negative and the positive. I check the air time. I make sure that I'm getting the tool up on a regular basis. Why? Because I'm transitioning from, I used to have a raggedy car, now I got a nice car. It takes a different maintenance from a, from a hoopty. See? That's it. Transitional thinking says I will proact and I will maintain from now on. That's transitional thinking. Quit saying you want God to bless you with something big, but you don't know how to maintain what you have now. You don't make up your bed in your room now. You got a two-bedroom apartment. You don't take care of that. How are you going to be able to transition to a large house? How are you going to transition when you're complaining about a $100 cable bill? How are you going to be able to handle a $2,000, or $3,000 house note if you don't change your thinking to maintain that level? To maintain that level of thinking. That doesn't bring a, the, the blessings of the Lord make it rich and add no sorrow to it. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta reveal to yourself that I'm ready for this blessing because I've accepted the responsibility and the accountability of maturity for what you have given me. Ooh, God, that's good right there. I'm gonna stop at point number 12. Our time is about up. Point number 11, transitional thinking is when you can move forward without first having a emotional setback. Transitional thinking is when you can move forward with, without first having an emotional setback. In other words, like yesterday. Yesterday, if God wouldn't have matured me, and thank God for my wife, I told you she has helped me grow up. I've grown up so much since I've been with my wife, and I thank God for it. She has really been my helpmate. So the, the car, the car was dead. The battery was dead. It's in your driveway. What you upset about? God lets you drive the car home. And when it got in the driveway, the battery went dead. That was the grace of God. Why didn't it die when I was sitting over my sister-in-law's house? I had been there for three or four hours. See? But when the battery was dead, it didn't make me feel like you're not a man. I didn't have an emotional breakdown because the car don't start. I didn't have an emotional breakdown because I got to buy another battery. I didn't have an emotional breakdown because I didn't do my job as a man. I should have checked the cables. I didn't have an emotional breakdown. When you start accepting transitional thinking, this is just a wake-up call. This is this God trying to move me into maturity. Don't die. Your wife is in a house. You got a warm house. Go in the house. Uh, get the cables. Uh, call your daughter out, your granddaughter out, uh, start your car back up, put it in the driveway, get the other car that you've been blessed with, and get your battery the next day. But don't break down, don't don't call off work, don't don't go in the house talking to your wife all nasty and you snapping and you mean and you irritable because everything bothers you because you don't know how to have, you don't know how to move forward without some kind of emotional setback. You don't know how to move forward without first taking two steps back. You don't know how to move forward without cussing somebody out first and then you want to say I'm sorry later. No, learn how to move forward without an emotional setback. That's transitional thinking. We'll get the battery tomorrow. If we don't get it tomorrow, we'll get it the next day. But we're good. We're good. I'm not going to be set back over everything that don't go right. Life knocks at your door. Things knock at your door. Does everything make you emotional? Do you respond to everything at level 35? When you know that that's the place God called you to be, God's word is on you. His 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 words is yes and amen. No one formed against me shall prosper. So I'm just gonna learn how to move forward and quit having emotional setbacks. My wife been going through. This is the third like a champ. She she's been making sure that she don't have no emotional setback. And even though she did, years she's been going through pain, going through pain, whole year with the foot. 
She's been handled like a champ because that's when you transit. That's when God said, I can trust you with trouble because trouble ain't going to mess you up. I can trust you with life circumstances and it's not going to mess you up because you have learned in your thinking. You know that all things work together for the good. You know that what the devil meant for evil, God meant for good. Uh, did you get that? So that's point number 11. Transitional thinking is when you can move forward without first having an emotional setback. All right? And then the last one, and we'll stop here. Time is about up. And we'll do, I'll do the other 12 tonight. Please meet me at Bible study tonight at 5.30. I'm going to give you another set of transitional thinking of principles and points in Bible study tonight. So the last one will be point number 12. Transitional thinking doesn't see fear as an option. Transitional thinking does not see fear as an option. Uh, fear is not an option. Nope. It's not even an option. I'm walking by faith and that's it. I'm walking by faith and that's it. I'm walking by faith. Fear is not even on the table. When you have transitioned your thinking, fear is not even an option. No, it's not even an option. And if it's not an option, then it shouldn't be a choice. Ooh. Stop choosing fear. Choose faith. You already have a yes in your spirit. It's not even an option. I'm walking through it. I don't care what's in front of me. I'm walking through it. I'm walking over it. I'm walking around it. I'm walking in it. I'm walking under it. But I will, no, I will not stop at it. I will not stop at it. I'm going to go over it, under it, through it, around it, in it. But I'm, ne I'm never going to stop at it. Fear is not an option. I don't have an option. Quitting is not an option. Giving up is not an option. Losing sight is not an option. Losing focus is not an option. Giving up my peace is not an option. That's transitional thinking. You don't even see fear as an option. We're going. We're transitioning. We will conquer the land. We will conquer the giants. Fear is not even an option. <laughs> Cash out, dollar sign, Apostle Robert Jenkins, PayPal, Apostle RJ. Thank everybody who came on today. I know you've been enjoying your Christmas. Thank you. Cash out, dollar sign, Apostle Robert Jenkins. You didn't see nothing go across the screen today because Pastor C is spending Christmas with his family, his kids, and his grandkids. And so we thank God for that. Uh, but cash out, dollar sign, Apostle Robert Jenkins. Make sure that you still be a giver. Please, please don't neglect the ministry. Please do that. Also, PayPal Apostle RJ. PayPal Apostle RJ. If you're on YouTube, you can give it a super chat. If you're on Facebook, we can give stars, stars, stars at a dime. OK, and also we have a donation button that you can give. This has been a, a tremendous, tremendous teaching. We will finish it up today. We're not finish it up, but we'll do another session today. Part two today on transitional thinking at 530. Please meet me. Same place, same time. Please share it. It's on your page. Tell some people about it that we'll be here dealing with transitional thinking tonight at Bible study. So we'll go over some more points concerning transitional thinking, getting ready for 2024 as we move in to a new year, a new set of assignments, a new challenges. We're going to make sure that we are, we change how we see things, so how we see things can change. I love you. And uh, I think that'll be it for uh, this morning. I hope to see many of you back uh, tonight and tomorrow is intercessory prayer for the women. And so take heed to all of the announcements. This is holiday season. So I want to play one of the videos that we released not too long ago, maybe a year ago or two ago. Uh, it's about a holiday. All right. So God bless you. Thank you. Walk in God's favor. Done. The gumbo's done. Everybody should be on their way. Ooh, I'm so excited about today. It's a holiday season. We are a family that stays together. No matter the weather is, I know you'll be okay. It's a holiday season. We are a family that stays together No matter the weather is, I know you'll
be okay. Laughing, crying. No, that love will be right there. Laughing, crying. No, that love will be right there. Laughing, crying. No, that love will be right there. Laughing, crying. No, that love will be right there. It's a holiday season. Time to come together and love each other. No matter the situation, it should be okay. It's a holiday season. We are a family that stays together. No matter the weather is, I know you'll be okay. It's the holiday season. We are a family that prays together. Just know that life is short, so don't you give up fast. It's the holiday season.